How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. That was Jeremiah 31 and 22. Jeremiah 31 and 22 is a perfect lead in to what we're going to be doing tonight. I am excited to bring to you a reading of a reading about the woman who I believe to be the baddest sister to ever walk the face of the earth. And I'm doing this as a tribute, a shout out to all of those brave and courageous women who are unafraid to stand in the gap for righteousness. The book of Judith, part one, where I will be reading chapters one through nine, coming up on this edition of Maddie's Rap. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, the multiple award-winning author, Matt D. Talford, author of two amazing books that you can find information on in the links in the description box below. I will not be adding those thumbnails to the video itself. You, you can see them at the end of the video if you're watching this. Now, for the benefit of those of you who drive and you listen to YouTube videos while, while you're driving, that this is, this is gonna be your type of video because I'm just gonna be reading tonight and uh, there won't be anything to see. So this is, this is good. Now, um, the book of Judith. I'm excited to to bring this to you guys. You just you have no idea. I'm I was thrilled the first time I read this and it just really gave me a a great appreciation for the strength of 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 women, the strength of our women in particular. When when I read the book of Judith, it just reminded me of, of my grandmother. It reminded me of my mother. It reminded me of uh, of all of the women who came before my great grandmother who who picked cotton in South Carolina. It just it just the strength to, to meet my great grandmother when I first did at the age of about uh, 10 years old. I was just there was just certain strength about her, even though at that time she was sitting in a rocking chair and she wasn't working anymore um, and she was up in years. She just had this strength about her that that showed me that she did not play from birth through the time that I had, had gotten to meet her. So um, to when I found this this book and this the book of Judith for those of you who are wondering it is not in the 66 book canon it is in the Apocrypha and again with uh, with the what I call over masculine presentation of of, of religion okay um, it, it is no wonder that this was left out of the scripture so um, I'm, I'm excited to read this. I want to make a comment, but I'm, I'm going to keep that comment to myself because I, I know that there's a faction of, of viewers that may want to come in the comments and read scripture to me about what place somebody's supposed to be in. I don't come from that. All right. In fact, I want you guys to, if you have not seen it, I want you to check out my video. Was the return of the divine feminine prophesied in scripture? Okay, it, it has everything to do with that that passage of scripture I just read. So um, I want you guys to check that out. It's going to talk about the return of the divine feminine and the rise of divine feminine energy in the earth right now. And for those of you who don't like astrology and demonize astrology, whatever, you're missing it. You're really missing it because you guys are missing it. Check the video out. Check the video out. I'm, I'm not. This is not a pro astrology video, or whatever. I just wanted to give that preface. Finally. I want to say uh, first off a shout out to the uh, the sister that left a comment in uh, under one of my other videos. I believe it was the Kyrie Irving video, or whatever. But um, she recommended that I check out. I don't know how we got on the topic. I don't remember. I would have to go back through the comments, and there's so many. Um, so so pardon me um, that I don't remember your your name, but you know who you are if you're watching this video. You are the one who recommended that I check out the Netflix series Warrior Nun. Let me tell you. Earlier today, I checked out the trailer and I've added it to my watch list. So I'm excited about it. I'm very excited about that. But with that being said, Hollywood, Hollywood lately over the last couple of years has been been giving you guys, been giving all of us a preview of, of things to come in the earth. And yes, the time is coming where a woman will compass a man. We see a preview of it 
in the book of Judith coming up. Okay. So the other, other shows that you can see this theme in, they, I'm not big into the, uh, I heard there was a, uh, movie about the Dahomey worries or whatever. I haven't seen that. Um, not interested in seeing it really. I kind of know the history, but I'm not interested in seeing the movie, but there, you've seen that theme a little bit in the Wakanda series or uh, black Panther. And, um, recently I saw a, uh, a, uh, TV. I'll, I'll say this and get off here and get to the reading. Recently I saw, um, a series on Amazon Prime Video called The Wheel of Time. And in it, you are seeing these 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 women warriors that are using spiritual power. They're using spiritual power to, to fight against evil. And uh, let me tell you, that divine feminine energy is it, spiritual. It's about spirituality. Two of the, if you look at the, really quick, if you look at the six chakra zones, and we all have six, I don't care if you're a male or female, feminine energy is not female, it's not gender-based, okay? Masculine energy is not male, it's not gender-based. Each of us has two different types of energy divided across six zones, all right? I'll put the chakra chart on the screen for you guys, all right? The root, masculine. The sacral, feminine. The solar plexus, masculine. The heart, feminine. The throat, masculine. The third eye, feminine, all right? I've done I've, I've gone over this in a lot of my videos, so I won't do it here. But um, that is the balance. All right. So as one more word of caution to those of you who might already be ramping up your fingers to go on the keyboard and and come at me for these 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 comments I'm making. This is not women worship. None of that. This is celebration of our divine partners. Divine partners. We're equal and opposite. We have different roles. All right. Neither is ever to be subjected to the other. We're partners, okay? All right? Your daughters are subjected. Your sons are subjected. But when you're grown, you're not raising no grown woman. And you're not raising no grown man, all right? I'm done with that. I'm going to take a short break. And we're getting right to this reading. The Book of Judith, chapters 1 through 9. Here on Maddie's Rap. Cause she's a brick. Bum 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 house. Bum bum bum. She's mighty mighty. 36, 24, 36. What a winning hand. <laughs> Yo, I I listen, the words I know I messed them up. But they're very appropriate. Judith had to be a brick house to pull off what she did, all right? So don't get offended. Don't get in your feelings. When you understand what she did, she couldn't go in there being a five, six, or seven. Judith was a 10 plus, all right? Judith was a 10. Judith, Judith was a 12 on a scale of 10. One to 10, Judith had to be a 12. At least that's the way I envision her. And y'all are going to see why. When I get into this reading, which I'm about to do right now for you guys, all right? So let's go. of Judith. Chapter 1 In the twelfth year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, who reigned in Nineveh, the great city, in the days of Arphaxad, which reigned over the Medes in Ect Ecbatain, and built in Ecbatain walls round about of stones hewn three cubits broad and six cubits long, and made the height of the wall seventy cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and set the towers thereof upon the gates of it an hundred cubits high, and the breadth thereof in the foundation three score cubits. And he made the gates thereof, even gates that were raised to the height of seventy cubits, and the breadth of them was forty cubits, for the going forth of his mighty armies, and for the setting in array of his footmen. Even in those days, King Nebuchadnezzar made war with King Arphaxad in the great plain, which is the plain in the borders of Ragau. And there came unto him all they that dwelt in the hill country, and all that dwelt by Euphrates, and Tigris, and Hydaspes, and the plain of Arioch, the king of Elimians, and very many nations of the sons of Kilad assembled themselves to the battle. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, sent unto all that dwelt in Persia, and to all that dwelt westward, and to those that dwelt in Cilicia, and Damascus, and Libanus, and Antilibanus, and to all that dwelt upon the seacoast, and to those among the nations that were of Carmel, and Galad, and the higher Galilee, and the great plain of Esdralam, and to all that were in Samaria, and the cities thereof, and beyond Jordan, unto Jerusalem, and Betan, and Chilas, and Cadiz, and the river of Egypt, and Tophnes, and Ramasa, and all the land of Gesem. Until ye come beyond Tanis and Memphis, and to all the inhabitants of Egypt, until ye come to the borders of Ethiopia. But all the inhabitants of the land made light of the commandment of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians. Neither went they with him to the battle, for they were not afraid of him. Yea, he was before them as one man, and they sent away his ambassadors from them without effect and with disgrace. Therefore, Nebuchadnezzar was very angry with all this country and swear by his throne and kingdom that he would surely be avenged upon all those coasts of Cilicia and Damascus and Syria and that he would slay with the sword all the inhabitants of the land of Moab and the children of Ammon and all Judea and all that were in Egypt till ye come to the borders of the two seas. Then he marched in battle array with his power against King Arphaxad in the seventeenth year, and he prevailed in this battle, for he overthrew all the power of Arphaxad and all his horsemen and all his chariots, and became lord of his cities, and came unto Ecbatani, and took the towers, and spoiled the streets thereof, and turned the beauty thereof into shame. He took also Arphaxad in the mountains of Ragau, and smote him through with his darts, and destroyed him utterly that day. So he returned after to Nineveh, both he and all his company of sundry nations, being a very great multitude of men of war. And there he took his ease and banqueted, both he and his army, a hundred and twenty days. That concludes chapter 1. The book of Judith, chapter 2. And in the eighteenth year, the two and twentieth day of the first month, there was talk in the house of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, that he should, as he said, avenge himself on all the earth. So he called unto him all his officers and all his nobles and communicated with them his secret counsel and concluded the afflicting of the whole earth out of his own mouth. Then he decreed to destroy all flesh that did not obey the commandment of his mouth. And when he had ended his counsel, Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, called Holofernes, the chief captain of his army, which was next unto him, and said unto him, Thus saith the great king, the lord of the whole earth, Behold, Thou shalt go forth from my presence, and take with thee men that trust in their own strength, of footmen an hundred and twenty thousand, and the number of horses with their riders twelve thousand. So he had a twelve thousand man cavalry and a foot soldier army of one hundred and twenty thousand. Verse 6. And thou shalt go against all the west country, because they disobeyed my commandment. And thou shalt declare unto that correction. And thou shalt declare unto that they pre correction. And thou shalt declare unto that they prepare for me earth and water. For I will go forth in my wrath against them, and will cover the whole face of the earth with the feet of mine army, and I will give them for a spoil unto them so that their slain shall fill their valleys, and brooks and the river shall be filled with their dead, till it overflow. And I will lead them captives to the utmost parts of all the earth. 
thou therefore shalt go forth and take beforehand for me all their coasts. And if they will yield themselves unto thee, thou shalt reserve them for me till the day of their punishment. But concerning them that rebel, let not thine eye spare them, but put them to the slaughter and spoil them wheresoever thou goest. For as I live and by the power of my kingdom, whatsoever I have spoken, that will I do by mine hand. And thou, and take thou heed that thou transgress none of the commandments of thy Lord, but accomplish them fully as I have commanded thee, and defer not to do them. Then Holofernes went forth from the presence of his Lord and called all the governors and captains and the officers of the army of Ashur. And he mustered the chosen men for the battle, as his Lord had commanded him, unto one hundred and twenty thousand and twelve thousand archers on horseback. And he ranged them as a great army is ordered for the war. And he took camels and asses for their carriages, a very great number, and sheep and oxen and goats without number for their provision, and plenty of victual, or food, for every man of the army, and very much gold and silver out of the king's house. Then he went forth, and all his power, to go before the king Nebuchadnezzar in the voyage, and to cover all the face of the earth westward with their chariots and horsemen, and their chosen footmen. A great number also sundry countries came with them like locusts, and like the sand of the earth, for the multitude was without number. And they went forth of Nineveh three days' journey toward the plain of Bechteleth, and pitched from Bechteleth near the mountain which is at the left hand of the upper Cilicia. Then he took all his army, his footmen and horsemen and chariots, and went from thence into the hill country, and destroyed food and lewd, and spoiled all the children of Rasis, and the children of Israel, which were toward the wilderness at the south of the land of the Chelians. Then he went over Euphrates and went through Mesopotamia and destroyed all the high cities that were upon the river Arboni, till ye come to the sea. And he took the borders of Cilicia and killed all that resisted him and came to the borders of Japheth, which were toward the south over against Arabia. He compassed, or surrounded, also all the children of Madian, and burned up their tabernacles, and spoiled their sheep coats. Then he went down into the plain of Damascus in the time of wheat harvest, and burnt up all their fields, and destroyed their flocks and herds. Also he spoiled their cities, and utterly wasted their countries, and smote all their young men with the edge of the sword. Therefore the fear and dread of him fell upon all the inhabitants of the sea coasts, which were in Sidon and Tyrus, and them that dwelt in Sur and Osina, and all that dwelt in Gemnon, and they that dwelt in Azotus and Ascalon feared him greatly. That concludes Judith chapter 2. So as we see here, Nebuchadnezzar was on the warpath because he wanted to build an army to go and fight and uh, to fight against his, his enemy, Arphaxad. And uh, they did not want to go. They did not want to go. They didn't respect him. And they were like, man, you can't tell us what to do. We're not even scared of you. So he went up against Arphaxad by himself. And uh, when he defeated Arphaxad, he said, now let's go find all these people that wouldn't join me, and I'm going to deal with them next. So they were afraid. Okay, now on to Judith chapter 3. The book of Judith chapter 3. So they sent ambassadors unto him to treat of peace, saying, Behold, we the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, the great king, lie before thee. Use us as shall be good in thy sight. Behold, our houses and all our places and all our fields of wheat and flocks and herds and all the lodges of our tents 
lie before thy face. Use them as it pleaseth thee. Behold, even our cities and the inhabitants thereof are the servants, are thy servants. Come and deal with them as seemeth good unto thee. So the men came to Holofernes and declared unto him after this manner. Remember, Holofernes is his chief captain, his chief captain leading this siege. Verse 6. Then came he down toward the seacoast, both he and his army, and set garrisons in the high cities, and took out of them chosen men for aid. So they and all the country round about received them with garlands, with dances, and with timbrels. Yet he did cast down their frontiers and cut down their groves, for he had decreed to destroy all the gods of the land, that all nations should worship Nebuchadnezzar only, and that all tongues and tribes should call upon him as God. Also, he came over against Esdraelon, near unto Judea, over against the great strait of Judea. And he pitched between Geba and Scythopolis, and there he tarried a whole month, that he might gather together all the carriages of his army. This concludes Judith chapter 3. The book of Judith chapter 4. Now the children of Israel that dwelt in Judea heard all that Holofernes, the chief captain of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, had done to the nations, and after what manner he had spoiled all their temples and brought them to naught. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of him and were troubled for Jerusalem and for the temple of the Lord their God. For they were newly returned from the captivity and all the people of Judea were lately gathered together and the vessels and the altar and the house were sanctified after the profanation. Therefore they sent into all the coast of Samaria and the villages and to Bethoron and Belmen and Jericho and to Choba and Esora and to the valley of Salem. So going back to verse three there, where it says they they pretty much sanctified their worship, their houses of worship because they had been profaned by the invaders prior to them going into captivity. And I guess for some time after. So they basically went in to sanctify and cleanse the uh, their temples. All right. So we're going to go back to verse four. I just wanted to revert. I just wanted to review verse three. We're now going to go back to verse four and then proceed on to the end of chapter four. Verse four. Therefore, they sent into all the coast of Samaria and the villages and to Bethoron and Belmen and Jericho and to Choba and Esora and to the valley of Salem and possessed themselves beforehand of all the tops of the high mountains and fortified the villages that were in them and laid up victuals for the provision of war. For their fields were of late reaped. So they had just they had just cleaned. They had just harvested the uh, the, the crops. And so they had fresh food. Verse six. Also, Joachim, the high priest, which was in those days in Jerusalem, wrote to them that dwelt in Bethulia and bet which is over against Esdraelon toward the open country near to Dothayim, charging them to keep the passages of the hill country. For by them there was an entrance into Judea, and it was easy to stop them that would come up, because the passage was straight for two men at the most. So this, high, this was a high passage, this was a high country with a passage that was so narrow that only two men walking side by side could cross through it. So they, they felt like they could defend it pretty easily. Verse 8, And the children of Israel did as Joachim the high priest had commanded them, with the ancients of all the people of Israel, which dwelt at Jerusalem. Then every man of Israel cried to God with great fervency, and with great vehemency did they humble their souls. Both they and their wives and their children and their cattle and every stranger and hireling and their servants bought with money, put sackcloth upon their loins. Thus every man and woman and the little children and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the temple and cast ashes upon their heads 
and spread out their sackcloth before the face of the Lord. Also they put sackcloth about the altar and cried to the God of Israel all with one consent earnestly that he would not give their children for a prey and their wives for a spoil and the cities of their inheritance to destruction and the sanctuary to profanation or profanation and reproach and for the nations to rejoice at. So God heard their prayers and looked upon their afflictions for the people fasted many days in all Judea and Jerusalem before the sanctuary of the Lord Almighty. And Joachim, the high priest, and all the priests that stood before the Lord, and they which ministered unto the Lord, had their loins girt with sackcloth, and offered the daily burnt offerings with the vows and free gifts of the people, and had ashes on their mitres, and cried unto the Lord with all their power, that he would look upon all the house of Israel graciously. This concludes chapter 4. The Book of Judith, chapter 5. Then it was declared to Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, that the children of Israel had prepared for war, and had shut up the passages of the hill country, and had fortified all the tops of the high hills, and had laid impediments in the champagne countries, wherewith he was very angry, and called all the princes of Moab, and the captains of Ammon, and all the governors of the sea coast. And he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is their power and strength, and what king is set over them, or captain of their army? And why have they determined not to come and meet me, more than all the inhabitants of the west? Then said Achior, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, Let my lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, which dwelleth near thee, and inhabiteth the hill countries, and there shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy servant." So he's like, look, let me break it down to you. And I ain't about to lie to you either. I'm like, yo, look, yo, look, play. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> Verse six, this people are descended of the Chaldeans and they sojourned heretofore in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt, and were increased with gold and silver and with much cattle. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there, while they were nourished and became there a great multitude, so that one could not number their nation. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them, and dealt subtly with them, and brought them low with laboring in brick, and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues, so the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And God dried the Red Sea before them, and brought them to Mount Sinai, and Caden and Cades Barna, and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and they destroyed by their strength all them of Esabon, and passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country. And they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Pharisite, the Jebusite, and the Sycamite, and all the Gergesites. And they dwelt in that country many days. So where you see it, where it says cast forth, that means they drove them out. Verse 17. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their God, and are come up from the places where they were scattered, and have possessed Jerusalem, 
where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error against this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. So he warned them. He warned them. Verse 22. And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people standing round about the tent murmured, and the chief men of Holofernes, and all that dwelt by the seaside, and in Moab, spake that he should kill him. So they were like, yo, man, who is this dude? Do he, does he know who we are? Does he know we the, the mighty army of Nebuchadnezzar? Yo, man, kill this dude for coming to here speaking that rubbish. That was their position. Verse 23. For say they, we will not be afraid of the face of the children of Israel. For lo, it is a people that have no strength nor power for a strong battle. Now, therefore, Lord Holofernes, we will go up. And they shall be a prey to be devoured of all thine. That concludes chapter 5. Getting juicy, y'all. Judith chapter 6. And when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, said unto Achior and all the Moabites before all the company of other nations, And who art thou, Achior, and the hirelings of Ephraim? that thou hast prophesied against us today and hast said that we should not make war with the people of Israel because their God will defend them? And who is God but Nebuchadnezzar? Y'all want to know why Nebuchadnezzar ended up eating grass in the wilderness, right? <laughs> Story for another day. Let's continue. Verse 3. He will send his power and will destroy them from the face of the earth, and their God shall not deliver them. But we, his servants, will destroy them as one man, for they are not able to sustain the power of our horses. For with them we will tread them underfoot, and their mountains shall be drunken with their blood, and their fields shall be filled with their dead bodies, and their footsteps shall not be able to stand before us, for they shall utterly perish, saith King Nebuchadnezzar, Lord of all the earth. For he said, None of my words shall be in vain. <laughs> so this dude thought he was God. He was on that. He was on that other ish. All right. Verse five. And thou, Achior, and hireling of Ammon, which has spoken these words in the day of thine iniquity, shall see my face no more from this day until I take vengeance of this nation that came out of Egypt. Verse six. And then shall the sword of mine army and the multitude of them that serve me Pass through thy sides, and thou shalt fall among their slain when I return. So he's basically telling them, I'm gonna kill, I'm, I'm gonna deal with you when I get back. Verse 7 Now, therefore, my servants, pardon me, now, therefore, my servants shall bring thee back into the hill country, and shall set thee in one of the cities of the passages. And thou shalt not perish till thou be destroyed with them. So he's gonna send him there to get, get killed with the Israelites. And if thou persuade thyself in thy mind that thou shalt be taken, let not thy countenance fail. Don't be of a sad face now. I have spoken it, and none of my words shall be in vain. Then Herlophrenes commanded his servants that waited in his tent to take Achior and bring him to Bethulia and deliver him into the hands of the children of Israel. So his servants took him and brought him out of the camp into the plain, and they went from the midst of the plain into the hill country and came unto the fountains that were under Bethulia. And when the men of the city saw them, they took up their weapons and went out of the city to the top of the hill. And every man that used a sling kept them from coming up by casting of stones against them. Nevertheless, having gotten privily under the hill, they bound Achior and cast him down and left him at the foot of the hill and returned to their Lord. But the Israelites descended from the city and came unto him and loosed him. 
and brought him to Bethulia, and presented him to the governors of the city, which were in those days Ozias the son of Micha, and the tribe of Simeon, and Cabris the son of Gothoniel, and Charmis the son of Melchiel. And they called together all the ancients of the city, and all their youth ran together, and their women, to the assembly, and they set Achior in the midst of all their people. Then Ozias asked him of that which was done. And he answered and declared unto them the words of the council of Holofernes, and all the words that he had spoken in the midst of the princes of Ashur. And whatsoever Holofernes had spoken proudly against the house of Israel. Then the people fell down and worshipped God, and cried unto God, saying, O Lord God of heaven, behold their pride, and pity the low estate of our nation, and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day. Then they comforted Achior, and praised him greatly. And Ozias took him out of the assembly unto his house, and made a feast to the elders. And they called on the God of Israel all that night for help. That concludes Judith chapter 6. The book of Judith chapter 7. The next day, Holofernes commanded all his army and all his people which were come to take his part, that they should remove their camp against Bethulia to take aforehand the ascents of the hill country and to make war against the children of Israel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of the men of war was an hundred and seventy thousand footmen and twelve thousand horsemen, beside the baggage and other men that were afoot among them, a very great multitude. So he grew his army with the other people he collected in route to Israel. And they camped in the valley near unto Bethulia by the fountain, and they spared themselves in breadth over Dothium even to Belmaim, and in length from Bethulia unto Sianamon, which is over against Esdralon. Now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, Now will these men lick up the face of the earth, for neither the high mountains nor the valleys nor the hills are able to bear their weight. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon their towers, they remained and watched all that night. But in the second day, Holofernes brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Israel, which were in Bethulia, and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of water, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them, and set garrisons of men of war over them, and he himself removed toward his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the sea coast, and said, Let our Lord now hear a word, that there be not an overthrow in thine army. For this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now, therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish. Remain in thy camp, and keep all the men of thine army, and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issueth forth of the foot of the mountain." For all the inhabitants of Bethulia have their water thence. So that's where they get their water from. So shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city. And we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near and will camp upon them, to watch that none go out of that city. So they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with fire, and before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Thus shalt thou render them an evil reward, because they rebelled and met not thy person peaceably. And these words pleased Holofernes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken. So the camp of the children of Ammon departed, and with them five thousand of the Assyrians, 
and they pitched in the valley and took the waters and the fountains of the waters of the children of Israel. Then the children of Esau went up with the children of Ammon and camped in the hill country over against Dothiam. And they sent some of them toward the south and toward the east over against Ekrebel, which is near unto Chusi, that is upon the brook Mochmor. And the rest of the army of the Assyrians camped in the plain and covered the face of the whole land. Their tents and carriages were pitched to a very great multitude. Then the children of Israel cried unto their to then the children of Israel cried unto the Lord their God, because their heart failed, for all their enemies had encompassed them round about, and there was no way to escape out from among them. Thus all the company of Ashur remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, four and thirty days, so that all their vessels of water failed all the inhabitants of Bethulia. So they basically ran them out of water. And the cisterns were emptied, and they had not water to drink their fill for one day, for they gave them drink by measure. Therefore their young children were out of heart, and their women and young men fainted for thirst, and fell down in streets, and fell down in the streets of the city, and by the passages of the gates, and there was no longer any strength in them. Then all the people assembled to Ozias and to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children, and cried with a loud voice and said before all the elders, God be judge between us and you, for you have done us great injury in that you have not required peace of the children of Ashur. For now we have no helper, but God hath sold us into their hands that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Now, therefore, Call them unto you, and deliver the whole city for a spoil to the people of Holofernes, and to all his army. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them, than to die for thirst. For we will be his servants, that our souls may live, and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children to die. We take to witness against you the heaven and the earth, and our God and Lord of our fathers, which punisheth us according to our sins and the sins of our fathers, that he do not according as we have said this day. Then there was great weeping with one consent in the midst of the assembly, and they cried unto the Lord God with a loud voice. Then said Ozias to them, Brethren, be of good courage. Let us yet endure five days. In the which space the Lord our God may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass, and there come no help unto us, I will do according to your word. And he dispersed the people, every one to their own charge, and they went unto the walls and towers of their city, and sent the women and children into their houses, and they were very low, brought in the city. They were, they were in some low vibrational energy. That concludes Judith chapter 7. Judith chapter 8. Now at this time Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Merari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Ozel, the son of Elsia, the son of Ananias, the son of Gedeon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Asitho, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samael, the son of Salasadal, the son of Israel. And Manasseh was her husband, of her tribe and kindred, who died in the barley harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head, and he fell on it on the for as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head, and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulia, and they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothiam 
and Balaamo. So it sounds like he died from a heat stroke. Now you understand why the people were crying because they ran out of water. There's parts of Israel that get real hot. All right. So it sounds like, again, the husband might have died from a heat stroke. Verse four. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. And she made her a tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wear her widow's apparel. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feasts and solemn days of the house of Israel. So she basically was like, you know what? I might fix up for these feasts and these Sabbaths, but after that, I ain't doing my hair. I ain't putting on no makeup. I ain't putting on no nice clothes. I'm going back to mourning the loss of my husband. All right. Um, and again, verse four, it looks like uh, her husband had been uh, passed on for three years and four months by the time that these uh, these uh, uh, men from Ashur had showed up to fight. Verse six, again, and she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feasts and solemn days of the house of Israel. Verse seven. She was also of a goodly countenance. I told y'all she was fine. <laughs> Brick house. And very beautiful to behold. And her husband, Manassas, had left her gold and silver and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands. And she remained upon them. So she was caked up. She was rich. She came from that royal lineage. Her husband was caked up. He left everything to his wife. And there was none that gave her an ill word as she feared God greatly. Now, when she had heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard, for Judith had heard all the words that Ozias had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days, then she sent her waiting woman, that had the government of all things that she had, to call Ozias and Shabris and Charmis and the ancients of the city. Okay, so she basically had a personal assistant that managed all her stuff. Verse 11, and they came unto her and she said unto them, hear me now, O ye governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right. Touching this oath, which ye made and pronounced between God and you and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days, the Lord turn to help you. And now who are you that have tempted God this day and stand instead of God among the children of men? And now try the Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything. For ye, for ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out God that he hath made all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our God to anger. For if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God, for God is not as man, that he may be threatened, neither is he as the son of man, that he should be wavering. So he's like, you can't threaten God. What you doing tempting him talking about five days? Verse 17. Therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us. And he will hear our voice if it please him. For there arose none in our age. Neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe nor family, nor people, nor city among us, which worship gods made with hands as hath been aforetime. For the which cause our fathers were given to the sword and for a spoil and had a great fall before our enemies. But we know none other God. Therefore, we trust that he will not despise us nor any of our nation. So she's basically I'm going to stop there. Verse uh, 20 for just a moment. So she's basically scolding them and explaining to them that the only reason our people have ever been delivered over into the hands of our enemies is is that they have worshipped other gods other than the one true living God. 
they worshiped these statues and gods made of stone and wood. And so God turned them over to their enemies. But she's basically saying we haven't done any of that. So why would he turn us over to our enemies? Y'all use some common sense and have some courage. Again, she used her masculine energy to speak to these men who had abandoned their masculine energy. All right. She used that first chakra, that third chakra and that fifth chakra, that root, that solar plexus and that throat. She spoke with boldness. Now I will return to verse 21. For if we be taken so, all Judea shall lie waste, and our sanctuary shall be spoiled, and he will require the profanation thereof at our mouth. So he basically going gonna to be like, what happened to my, my temple? How did my temple get profaned? Y'all explain what happened here. Verse 22. And the slaughter of our, and the slaughter of our brethren and the captivity of of the country and the desolation of our inheritance will he turn upon our heads among the Gentiles wheresoever we shall be in bondage and we shall be an offense and a reproach to all them that possess us. So she's basically telling them, look, if you do this, we're going to be scattered again and they're going to take all our stuff, all our gold, all our silver, everything we got this good. They're going to take it for themselves. Verse 25. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria, when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. For he had not tried us in the fire, as he did them, for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him, to admonish them. Then said Osias to her, All that thou hast spoken has spoken, all that thou hast spoken hast thou spoken with a good heart, and there is none that may gainsay thy words. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested, but from the beginning of thy days all the people have known thy understanding, because the disposition of thine heart is good. I told y'all the scripture is a spiritual book. He's talking about two spiritual energy zones. Wisdom comes from the sixth chakra. OK, that is that third eye. That's where that's where wisdom comes from. All right. That's a product of the third eye chakra. All right. And then where is he? He mentions that fourth chakra. So she's she's fully embracing her feminine energy, wisdom and heart. I'll read verse 29 again. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding, because the disposition of thine heart is good. Verse 30. But the people were very thirsty and compelled us to do unto them as we have spoken and to bring an oath upon ourselves, which we will not break. Therefore, now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman and the Lord will send us rain to fill our cisterns. And we shall faint no more. Then said Judith unto them, Hear me, and I will do a thing, which shall go throughout all generations to the children of our nation. Ye shall stand this night in the gate, and I will go forth with my waiting woman. And within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Lord will visit Israel by mine hand. Let's go back to that passage of scripture in Jeremiah. For the Lord hath done a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. <sighs> As my dad used to say back in the day, woo wee. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to read that verse 33 again for the people in the back of the room. Ye shall stand this night in the gate, and I will go forth with mine waiting woman. And within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Lord will visit Israel by mine hand. But inquire not ye of mine act, for I will not declare it unto you till the things be finished that I do. So she basically said, look, don't ask him. Don't ask me what I'm doing. Don't ask me no questions. Don't ask what I'm about to do. All right. <laughs> ain't none, what I'm about to do. Ain't none of your business. All right. Don't ask me what ha don't ask me what I'm going to do until the work is done. Then I'll tell you all what I did when I get back. I love it. Told you that I was a bad sister. Verse 35. Then said Osias and the princes unto her, 
Go in peace, and the Lord God be before thee to take vengeance on our enemies. So they returned from the tent and went to their wards. That concludes Judith chapter 8. Judith chapter 9. I'm going to read this chapter, and I will end the reading, and we will resume with chapter 10 in part 2. The book of Judith, chapter 9. Judith fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head and uncovered the sackcloth wherewith she was clothed. And about the time that the incense of that evening was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, Judith cried with a loud voice and said, O Lord God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her, and discovered the thigh to, shame, to her shame, and polluted her virginity to her reproach. But thou saidest, It shall not be so, and yet they did so. Wherefore thou gavest their rulers to be slain, so that they died their bed in blood. That's die, D-Y-E, like die, like hair dye. So that they died their bed in blood, being deceived, and smotest the servants with their lords, and the lords upon their thrones, and has given their wives for a prey, and their daughters to be captives, and all their spoils to be divided among the, thy dear children, which were moved with thy zeal, and abhorred the pollution of their blood, and called upon thee for aid. O God, O my God, hear me also, a widow. For thou hast wrought not only those things, but also the things which fell out before, and which ensued after. Thou hast, n thou hast thought upon the things which are now, and which are to come. Yea, what things thou didst determine were ready at hand, and said, Lo, we are here. For all thy ways are prepared, and thy judgments are in thy foreknowledge. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power. They are exalted with horse and man. They glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and sling. And know not that thou art the Lord that breakest the battles. The Lord is thy name. Now y'all know that the Lord, that's, a, that's an edit. I've said that in other videos. It would, it would read, it, would, it probably read Yahweh or Yahuwah, however you want to pronounce it. Some say Yahweh, some say Yahuwah. But the Lord is the title. The Lord, God's name is not the Lord. Let me, let me reread that and plug in the proper name. Verse 7. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power. They are exalted with horse and man. They glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and sling. And know not that thou art the Lord that breakest the battles. Yahuwah is thy name. Throw down their strength in thy power and bring down their force in thy wrath. For they have purpose to defile thy sanctuary and to pollute the tabernacle where thy glorious name resteth and to cast down with sword the horn of thy altar. Behold their pride and send thy wrath upon their heads. Give into mine hand, which am a widow, the power that I have conceived. Second chakra. Smite by the deceit of my lips the servant with the prince and the prince with the servant. Break down their stateliness by the hand of a woman. For thy power standeth not in multitude, nor thy might in strong men. For thou art a God of the afflicted, and helper of the oppressed, an upholder of the weak, a protector of the forlorn, a savior of them that are without hope. I pray thee, I pray thee, O God of my father, and God of the inheritance of Israel, Lord of the heavens and earth, creator of the waters, king of every creature, hear thou my prayer, and make my speech and deceit to be their wound and stripe, who have purposed cruel things against thy covenants and thy hallowed house, and against the top of Zion, and against the house of the possession of thy children, and make every nation and tribe to acknowledge that thou art the God of all power and might, 
and that there is none other that protecteth the people of Israel but you. And my friends, that concludes Judith chapter 9. Welcome back, family. I hope you all enjoyed part one of the book of Judith, chapters 1 through 9. Exciting, exciting. That, that book never gets boring to me. Um, Judith was a very powerful woman. She was a very, very, very powerful woman. Um, the prayer. If that prayer didn't get you hyped up, I don't know what else will. So uh, listen, I won't hold you guys any longer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are watching this after, well, let me backtrack. This concludes part one. I am going to read chapters 10 through 16 on tomorrow. All right, Monday. Today's this is Sunday evening, November the 13th, 2022. Part two will be published on Monday evening, November 14th, 2022. If you are watching this video after Monday, then there will be a link in the description box to part two. Otherwise, come back tomorrow for the exciting conclusion of the book of Judith. You've been listening to author Matt D. Talford, Maddie's Rap. Y'all be blessed. And don't forget, tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? You got to show it, all right? Love is a verb. It is also a noun. But if you focus on the verb, the noun always takes care of itself. I love you guys. Have a good night. Peace.